Hey, what's up? We're doing a super simple game today. Like super, super simple. It's only like literally four lines of code that we're adding, but I think it'll still be fun for you. Lots of you want to learn how to think like a programmer. So programming these little small projects and showing what a real programmer thinks will be really good for you. And I've also made this seven tips on how to think like a programmer. If you want to download it, it's helped a lot of people so far. I think it'll help you out too. That'll be in a link in the description. But if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week, just like this one. So if you're new here and you might wanna see that, then consider subscribing. Let's get started. This is a fortune teller program, like a fortune cookie. You get a fortune cookie, you open it up, you read it, and then you say embed at the end. But let's start by making a new Java project. Call it fortune cookie. All right, we'll make a new class, which will have our main method. We'll call this fortunes, hit the main method and finish. So the end result is going to be, when we click the green run button, we're gonna have a random fortune come up and that'll be the fortune from the fortune cookie. So let's think, how can we achieve this? Well, the first thing might be obvious is we need the fortunes. We gotta have all the fortunes that we're gonna throw at the user. So that's pretty obvious. Then we need a way to get a random one of those, and then we need a way to just print it to the console. Let's start by just getting the fortunes. So I'm just gonna go to some fortune cookie website, uh, fortune cookie questions, fortune cookie quotes. I've looked this up before. And we'll just grab a few of these. We'll just grab like this many. And then just copy and paste those, we're gonna put them up here so that it's kind of out of the way of our main method. We've got red underlines because Java's like, dude, what the heck? This isn't code, what is wrong with you? Are you high on something? Which you would say, yes, we are high on programming. But we've got a fortunes, we gotta put them in somewhere, like some sort of data structure. A data structure is just taking data like this and structuring it. So that could be anything like an array, a queue, a stack, a linked list, a heap, but we're gonna do an array because that's that's really easy. So to make an array is like this. These are strings. So we're gonna say it's a string array. We'll call it fortunes. And then equals whatever is gonna go inside. We'll take the first one, cut that, and put that in here. We'll format a little better and put the whole thing inside of double quotes. Now we've got an array. I'm just gonna make this a little bigger for you. Actually, you know what? I'll just full screen this. Yeah. Now we have a fortunes array with one fortune in it. Now we just got, got to add the rest. So to do that, just type a comma and we'll put the second thing in here with parentheses. It'll try to be smart and do this auto stuff. So you might have to delete some of it and then do that all the way down. You can do as many or few as you want. And then when you're done, maybe throw a fun one in there. Hey, let's save it, clean it up a little. Now we've got our array of fortunes that has about 10 or so fortunes in here. Now here's a tip. When you set something up for the first time, you wanna make sure that thing is working now before you add a bunch of other code later, trust me. So what I like to do is just, for this example, just take one small thing just to make sure that this is working. So maybe take one simple element from it and print it out to the screen. That's what I do all the time, is just print out with systemout.println. I literally just print out something related to it to make sure it works. So we'll just get like the first element of the array to do that, you just put square brackets for the array, and then the index starts at zero. We get a red underline because since this doesn't have the static keyword in front of it and it's in a class, it thinks like, well, classes are used to make objects. So if you make an object, then you'll probably use this. And that's how you would access it. You'd make the object and do object.fortune. And we don't want to access it through an object, we just want to do it through the main method. So we got to add this static keyword, stay still static. That takes the underline away. We'll save it, make it smaller, run. We got today, it's up to you to create 
the peacefulness you long for. And that is the very first one, index zero. So it's working. And this is like almost the entire small project we're doing. When we run it, it brings a fortune. But in this case, it's bringing the same fortune every time, which isn't very fun. Imagine if you got a fortune cookie that always had the same fortune. It would actually be a pretty cool trick because you would know and you could guess. And then your friends would be like, whoa, how do you know? But we want to randomize this zero to be something else, to be either one or two or three or four or the very end. So to do that, we make a random object. We don't have to write logic to create random numbers based on blah, blah, blah. We use objects that already do this stuff to help us out right now. So we'll just make a random object. We'll call it rand equals new random. There's some red underlines because we need to import it into our program. So just hover over and click import. This generates this little statement at the top, which brings that random object code into our file, which lets us use it. So now that we have the random object, we can access the variables and methods that that random object has by doing ran dot. And then you see all these methods that we can do. The one we want is called next int, so we'll type next int. And then in here, we want to put the very top number that we want to randomize to. This generates, say, say I put five in there. This generates a random number between zero and four. Yeah, it's pretty confusing. Zero and four for a total of five. So to test this, like I said, every little piece of code you write, it's really best to just throw it in a print statement and make sure that one thing works before you move on and make things more complicated. And then you're looking back and stuck for hours. So we'll do, we'll just set this into a new variable, int r equals that, and then we'll print r. Save it, run it. <coughs> the first one is zero. Let's run it again. Three, zero, four, cool. So this is generating random numbers and looks like it goes from zero to four. So that's good. We tested that, we made sure that it doesn't hit five. So what we actually wanna do here is instead of five, we wanna put the size of the fortunes because we wanna generate indexes from zero to the very end. And an easy way to do that is just typing the name of the array dot length because the array knows length. So we can do fortunes dot length. Super useful function of arrays. They already know their size. We don't have to count them all. Now we can save and run this and it will generate numbers from zero to the length of the array. But again, let's test that length to make sure it's actually doing the right thing. I'm going to comment this out and print out fortunes dot length. Save and run it. And the length is 13. So if we wanted to count these, one, two, three, four, five, 13, yes, good, it works. So at the very beginning when you're programming, you wanna do these little things. It ingrains programming into your brain and makes you a better programmer and makes it easier on you. So literally, this is what I do. This is what I do. I print out the little things, one at a time. I take, I comment out code that I don't need right now and I just make sure, make my, sure my sanity is in check. So let's put it back and now let's print out R since now we know that the random number is working. The length is 13. We're generating zero to 13, which are the indexes of an array. Perfect. Now, all we need to do to generate a random fortune now is to just print out the fortune at that randomly generated index. So now instead of printing R, we'll do fortunes at position R. Beautiful. Save. Run. A random fortune pops out. Enjoy the good luck a companion brings you. In this case, you are my companion. We're doing this program together. Let's try another one. Let's crack open another fortune. Hard work pays off in the future. Laziness pays off now. The work you put in today to make this program was hard work. You sat down with me and figured out what each small part of this program does so that the next time you see a random object, you know how to make random numbers, you know how to create
create arrays. You may not remember everything. And that is okay, that is perfectly normal. Nobody remembers everything, are you kidding me? Like all this syntax and stuff? It's these little moments of focus and learning that makes you so much better. Hope you enjoyed this fortune cookie program. Again, like the tips I mentioned here with the commenting and stuff. I have more of those in here. It's gonna be really good for you. Check this out in the link in the description. Seven tips on how to think like a programmer. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.